Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your weekly reading. So um, in terms of your love relationships, I have two, two definitive storylines here. So take what fits for your situation, okay? And because I feel like I'm speaking to two groups of people. But the underlying energy is that there is, um, for those in relationships, I feel like there is third party um, situation. There's third party interference in your relationship, as well as some of you honestly potentially stepping out on your relationship partner. Um, and I feel like the energy is sort of like split this way. So the, I want to talk about, first of all, the person that you're dealing with. Okay, this is the partner. And uh, for those of you in a partnered relationship, I feel like it's a marriage and I, or I feel at least, you know, this is somebody that's been given a title. So we have here the Empress and because it's somebody that has a definitive role, I feel like, you know, this can be uh, a wife, a husband, or even a girlfriend or a boyfriend, somebody with status, somebody that has been given a title. And the way that this person is, they're very maternal, they're very nurturing, very, very caring. And they do a lot in order to maintain the household. They also do a lot in order to maintain stability within a dwelling, within a family unit. They are also the bearer of traditions. And, you know, they, they keep the customs alive. They keep the, the household running. They keep the kids nice and clean and well fed and they put them to bed. And you're dealing with somebody that embodies the energy of love, nurturing and abundance. On the negative side of this person, I feel like they can be a little bit controlling. They can be a little bit materialistic or a little bit frivolous, a little bit too much into the way that they look, the way that they are seen by the outsiders or the way that they are seen by their family. But this is somebody who is very, very strong. They have, you know, generally a very good sense of like a, a moral compass. And they operate from a space where they like to take care of people. They like to nurture. Um, they can also have a lot of suitors because this deals with beauty. It deals with harmony, beauty, and just um, appearance. So they could have, you know, a lot of people vying for them. They can be very beautiful personally, or at least in your eyes. And um, I feel as if, you know, with this Empress energy and... It's right next to the High Priestess. The High Priestess, usually in the traditional Rider weight deck, it's like the hidden woman, okay? The, the, the mister or the mistress. The person that we are keeping on the side or the person that is not in the public eye. So for many of you, I, I just see this opposition here between the Empress, the person that you're seen in the public eye with, and the high priestess, the person that's kind of like operating and working behind the scenes. And I feel as well that, you know, you're divided between two people. You might also have two people that you're, that are in your environment that you're juggling or you're stepping out on a relationship. What's coming in at the beginning of the deck or uh, the spread here is the seven of swords. And the Seven of Swords is a situation where it's not entirely upfront and honest and um, seeing the light of day. It's like keeping things from, um, it, it's like holding back on communicating whole truths, okay? Hiding things, keeping things under wraps, keeping things hidden. So it's sort of like all these questions are coming at you and you're kind of dodging or being evasive. Or at least if this is not coming from your end, somebody is dodgy or being evasive when it comes to, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things, uh, trying to get answers, trying to get um, some type of clarity in a situation. And when it, it comes out as this, as a sword energy, I feel like a lot of it is coming from your end, where you're dodging people in there, the interrogation process, you know, where you're being very evasive, you're being very careful about what you're revealing, and you're also being very careful about what you're holding back and uh, what you're, you're choosing 
very wisely actually um, what you're choosing to tell people what questions you're choosing to ask or answer and what questions you're choosing to evade so there's this evasiveness that's coming through and I feel like in the relationship sector it usually denotes you know third parties it usually denotes another person that's in the mix I'm also feeling as well that you could also be dealing with somebody that is like this where they're keeping some information hidden from you and you're trying to find out you could be getting to know this person and you might see this person as the one that you want to you know build a relationship with but there is some sense of like they're either in your eyes being evasive or they're kind of mysterious they're kind of hard to pin down and because of it, the attraction between you and this other person is very, very, it's, it's felt on a very spiritual, on a very deep rooted level, um, as well as this sense of bewilderment, this sense of mystery, this sense of wanting to possess another person wanting to know them inside and out wanting to ask these questions but for whatever reason you're going about it asking the questions in a very roundabout way and um i feel like the energy flows both ways okay for others of you you could be dealing here with a fire sign we have here the knight of wands this is somebody that hails from a foreign place from a foreign land and I usually associate it with this with uh, Sagittarius, which is your polar opposites. But it could be, you know, another uh, whatever fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, uh, Sun, Moon or Rising. This is someone who's quite passionate. They don't stop in one place for too long. It's like, you know, um, the, the Rolling Stone gathers no moss. They have that mentality. They're very here today, gone tomorrow. They're very exciting. They're very passionate. They go after what they want. And I feel almost like relationships are nice in their lives, but they're kind of like the nomad. They're constantly looking for new pastures. They're constantly looking for new adventures. They're constantly looking for new, uh, new land to explore, to roam, to conquer. And I also feel as if, if you're involved with this person, there's a lot of things in their past that you're trying to figure out. There, are, But I don't know why, it's just the communication is not very straightforward. It's almost like you both are feeling this really strong attraction towards one another. But there is a sense of like, they're like this, can I trust them? Or they're also wondering, you know, the Gemini person is like this. Can I trust them to be truthful and faithful? And then you're wondering, can I trust this person to be truthful and faithful as well? So if you're dealing with a fire sign, um, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising, there's this element of wanting to contain, tame the beast, to, to possess the person, to have them do your bidding to want to control them, to try to like contain fire, you know, that wands energy, to try to contain it in your hands. So you might have very well met your match for this week, Gemini. And you know, this is not just somebody that just randomly comes into the picture. I feel like there are things about them that kind of, it, it, it's, it's almost like, the attraction I feel is very strong as well as the temptation to want to control to possess they could be very possessive towards you and you could be likewise very possessive towards them and I feel like there are clashes when it comes to egos one person wants to be free one person wants to you know I'll come and go as I please I can't be contained and then the other person wants to possess wants to control wants to uh, dictate you know how the relationship is gonna go and so it, it's almost like in the process of trying to contain fire in your hands 
you might get burned. You want to be a little bit careful if you're dealing with this character. Not that they're not a bad person, but they value their independence so much that it's going to be very difficult for you to tell them, you know, like, I, I see this energy, you sit where I tell you to sit, you know, it's, um, it's not that severe, not that controlling or manipulative, but I feel like it's this back and forth that you have with another person and the back and forth, the communication though is, is very, very, very wavy. It's not straightforward. And so in order to deal with this type of energy, if you're dealing with somebody that you really like and you, you want to, you know, um, build something with them, clear communication, especially if it's a fire sign, Gemini's, you need to be very straightforward with your intentions. You need to communicate in a very matter of fact, blunt manner, because I feel like all uh, fire signs really appreciate is just, you know, they don't like cryptic messages. They're too impatient to try to figure things out. And they're too impatient to wait for you to state your intentions. So the, the way to deal with this is with the high priestess energy coming in in the middle of the spread it's sort of like let's try not to hold back when it comes to communication let's be very clear and let's not be cryptic when we are dealing with other people this is a general you know good rule of in life but i feel like for some of you there are just some things here with power struggles and control that's really interfering with your relationships okay um, for others of you, it could be this fire sign that is stepping out on the relationship. There's an overall sense of mistrust between you and them. And there's an overall sense of like wanting to, they might have several options. And you know, with the partner you're dealing with or the person that you like, they might be somebody that smells really good that looks really good i see a lot of flowers here so I'm, I'm tempted to say like smell somebody who's very very tactile um they could very well be you know extremely beautiful handsome they take care of themselves they're on a pedestal they're just kind of like floating up there so it's like you at least put them on a pedestal and you feel like they're too good to be true you want to possess you want to bring them back down to earth or likewise somebody could be doing this to you but i just feel as if it's an energy of like freedom versus commitment and it's an, uh, uh, an expansive energy as well that deals with, it's stirring up some insecurities from both parties. And as a result of it, I feel that it can be very challenging when it stirs up our insecurity. And when we feel like we can't communicate properly, we feel very rattled by the other person whenever we're around them and we can't really gauge their intentions or we can't really gauge what we're about to do or they're coming so fast and so they're coming on so fast and so strong that you wonder do they do this with everybody am i just you know one of their groupies am i just one of the person that's following their lead or do they actually have a specific place in their heart for me so i feel like it's stirring up some anxieties as well as some insecurities within you it's exciting, it's, it's very exciting, but it's also very topsy-turvy. And so what you decide to do, I feel is that you need to take control of the situation and you need to have some type of um, clear and straightforward communication. So rather than, you know, keeping them at bay and potentially driving them away, if you really like them, you want to have some type of a mutual understanding, agreement, consensus, or at least, you know, um, allow them to kind of uh, just, just understand where you're coming from. Because I feel an energy of like, you know, you can leave, just go, I don't need you. But deep down, you do need them. You want them to come back, but you want to play it off. You want to appear aloof. And so I feel like there is some 
there's some there are a lot of cues things that are lost in translations there are also a lot of miscommunication as well that needs to be worked out i don't feel like it's getting resolved but it needs to definitely be worked out in this spread okay at least for this week so if this sounds like the situation you're in where it's not third party but there are fears of third parties and you need to kind of just you know open up that channel of communication if you are dealing with a third party i feel like there your your intuition is leading you on the right path towards kind of freeing yourself and not being um it, it's like you know that uh being wrapped around somebody's fingers and feeling like they've got you pinned down you can't go even though you want to go off with somebody else it feels like that to me um, moving on to other areas of your life here this is pretty much serving as your spiritual advice and um, what I feel overall is you are going to be playing mediator this week okay and I see some issues when it comes overall here to dealing with people, giving advice to people, being kind of like the onlooker in a conflictual situation. So for many of you, you might be, uh, you, you might work as a therapist. You might play therapist for family members. You might play therapist for friends. You might be as well playing therapists for co-workers who are not getting along, who are competing with one another, who are working at cross purposes with one another, who are not communicating very well. And so you're going to be kind of like the person that they, they all go to, to vent their emotions, to vent everything that they're feeling. Um, so whatever, you know, frustrations other people are dealing with, they're going to come to you and you're going to be kind of like that shoulder for them to cry on here with this Queen of Cups. And I also feel, you know, this is family, this is friends um, coming in as well as people in the workplace, not so much co-workers, maybe even people that you're managing, supervising, teaching. There's a big element here about training learning a new craft, learning a new skill. Everybody's on board, working in the same uh, direction, building something of lasting value. And I feel like, you know, it's a process where uh, we want it a specific way, but then we understand that the skill set of the people that, were, that, that are tasked with completing this process, they might not be capable they might not be competent so we kind of have to lower our expectations and kind of like go to their level to teach them where they're at so i see you as being sought after for advice for your opinion for your skills and expertise and i also see you giving logical tangible advice on the practical front but also giving you know emotional advice as well in other areas um, there could also be conflict between you and a water sign, okay? So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising regarding, you know, um, this is a, a card about competition here. So it could be, you could be competing with each other. If it's somebody, it's somebody who's also in very high demand, they might do things differently than you because, you know, you're an air sign, they're a water sign. They're not going to move as fast as you'd hope. So if you're waiting on them, there's going to be that element of frustration. Um, the career front is looking really, really good here with the sun. The sun indicates to me, you know, the, the spotlight. It's, it's sort of like the areas where you shine or the areas where you're very, very visible everybody sees everything that you're doing but it's next to the three of pentacles which denotes that people are soliciting you they're trying to find you they're coming to you in uh, droves to try to get your expertise get your ideas get your opinions so i feel like you're giving off advice and then the other person stalls and they're trying to you know work one step at a time so when i mention like the the people in your midst they're tasked with doing something but their skill level or their expertise or their capabilities are not on par with what you had 
plan for them so you have to lower your expectations a little bit this is sort of like somebody who doesn't really know how to do things um, repetitively so it could be you know they they they're trying to remember the process so they do like five things and then they stop and ask for further clarification or further um, advice before they can move on to the next thing it's not like the eight of pentacles where you know they've done it over and over and over and over again and now they're an expert at it it's just they're going to stall they're going to take a little bit more time they're going to need a little bit more guidance before they proceed to the next step so in um opposition so it, it's like it's not like this where they're kind of uh, working without direction you know they know exactly what to do they know how to do this because they've encountered it before this is sort of like waiting for feedback waiting for for the next step waiting for further advice so I feel like it's a stop go in the work front but people are stopping and going whereas you're the one overseeing the work overseeing the end result and you're giving snippets of advice along the way um, I feel like the work front, the professional front, it, it's working out really, really well. It's just as well, I feel, uh, with this love situation, you know, if it's a third party interfering, um, it could heavily be as well, like, you know, um, I'm hearing like unwanted attention, a lot of unwanted attention that can lead to misunderstanding as well. So it could be where there's like a, an active third party interfering in your relationship and it's creating jealousy even though you're not partaking in that it can also create jealousy it can create misunderstanding when you're trying to nurture and foster a relationship with somebody else okay so i hope the reading has been helpful for you guys uh, best of luck for this week okay take care